In this video, we're going to go over factoring simple quadratics. A quadratic is just a polynomial expression with, with numbers like a and b and c and variables. Typically, we get a variable like x, and here we'll usually put x squared. So since the highest exponent of the variable is 2, right here, you can see the 2, that means we have a quadratic. And what makes a simple quadratic simple is that we can easily factor it out. So let me get, show you an example of how this works, and, and I'll talk through it, and then at the end I'll show why it makes sense. So how do we factor? Well, let's say you're given something like x squared plus 4x plus 3 and they want you to factor this. What do you do? Well, the first thing I do, I'm going to factor this in pairs. So I set up two expressions right here. I always start with x, and you'll see why in a moment. And the next thing I notice is that I'm adding. So I'm going to add both terms. The last step, and the general goal with these type of quadratics, is to find factors of this number, c, that add to this number, b. So again, our goal is to find factors of this number that always add up to b, and in some cases you won't be able to, and we have other strategies when that happens, but here you can. Because what are some factors of 3? Well, it's prime, so 3 times 1 is 3, but also 3 plus 1 adds up to 4. So that satisfies our requirement. In other words, we can use the factors of 3 and 1 here to factor out this quadratic because they add up to 4 and they also multiply to 3 and when that happens you're done. How do we know we're done? Well let me show this in two ways. When you're factoring this out all you're doing is writing this in a way that allows you to solve for x which you'll see in other videos. But here I could check that these two things are equal. What I'm going to do now is use the distributive property and that's just based on any basic long multiplication algorithm. It tells us hey take these two parts right here and multiply them by these two parts right here. So multiply out all four combinations. So first we're going to take x and multiply it by this x. x times x. And then we take x and multiply it by this 1. It's a positive 1 so we're going to add 1x. And now we move on to the next term. 3 times x gives us what? Well, it's positive so it's 3x. 3 times 1 is what? That's just 3. So now I'm almost done. If I rewrite x times x, that's the same thing as x squared. If I add up 1x and 3 others, I get 4x's. And I still have this 3 right here. So what do we just do? Well, I just showed you that, yes, this factoring right here matches our original term right here because if we multiply it out, we actually get the original term, right? This matches all the way back to the beginning. And if that doesn't convince you, we can write out another way. Here we have x plus 3 times x plus 1, right? That's what this is saying. So if we represent this as long multiplication, we can do the same thing. We could say take this 1 and multiply it by both 3 and x. So 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 times x is x. And then we can keep going x times 3 is 3x. x times x is x squared. Right? Those are positives, so we add them. And now we add this up. Well, I can't really add 3 and 3x, so I'll leave it as 3x plus 3. I can't really combine x squared and x, so I'll leave it as x squared plus x. But now, this right here, I'm just going to reshuffle using the commutative property and associative property and group these two first. So 3x and x is 4x. And if we simplify that, we get x squared plus 4x plus 3. So you can see that this factoring technique for simple quadratics works. And the key step in this process is to find factors of c that add up to b. Let's look at a couple more. So next, let's try another positive situation. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16. So, again, I'm going to factor this into two pairs, right here. And write my variables x. I'm going to start with x. 
I'm adding up everything, so it's going to stay positive. And I want to look at factors of 16. Well, I have 16 times 1, but 16 plus 1 is 17, and I need factors that add up to 8. So keep going. 8 times 2 is 16, but 8 plus 2 is 10. That's not what I need. Keep going. 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 plus 4 equals 8. So that means I'm going to use this factor pair right here in my factoring. So I'm going to write a 4 here and here. And I'm done. And just to check, you should always check, especially as you are new at this, multiply this term by both terms here. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. And then keep going. Always check that you have at least four combinations. 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times 4 is 16. Add up these two 4x's. That's 8x. We still have our 16 and our x squared. So in our check right here, we see that we come back to the original formula if we multiply out these two terms. So if they ask us to factor this, which they'll often do, that means you could write this as an answer. Let's try one more. What happens if you have a negative in the mix, like x squared minus 5x plus 6? Well, our strategy is essentially still the same, but let's see what happens. Some things will be a little bit different. Start with x in both cases, and before I put my signs in here, I want to think about this because I want to find factors of 6 that add up to negative 5. Well, and, and you might feel I'm a little shaky about calling this negative 5. If that's the case, what I always suggest is to rewrite the whole thing in terms of addition. So instead of x squared minus 5x plus 6, I would just rewrite this as x squared plus a negative 5x plus 6. And you can do that if you remember with simple subtraction and addition. If I was to say, well, what's 2 minus 3? You say that's negative 1. Okay, what's 2 plus negative 3? Well, that's still negative 1. That's because adding negative 3 and subtracting a positive 3 are the same thing. So here, subtracting a positive 5x is the same thing as adding a negative 5x. So when I rewrite this as addition, you can clearly see that our b value is not 5, but negative 5. So now we need factors of 6 that add up to negative 5. And do we have that? Well, let's try it out. What are some factors of 6? Well, 6 times 1 is 6, but 6 plus 1 is 7. Doesn't work. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 plus 3 is 5, but we need negative 5. All right, so what do we do? We go into negative factors. What about negative 6 times negative 1? Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, but if we add up those two, negative 6 plus negative 1, that gives us negative 7. doesn't work. Keep going. Negative 2 times negative 3. Well, that's positive 6. And if we add up these two, negative 2 plus negative 3, we get negative 5. So this is the factor pair that works. So we're going to use a negative 2 and a negative 3. And if you're feeling shaky about that, you can write it as x plus negative 2 times x plus negative 3. Rewriting it as addition, I think, um, helps us keep track of what's actually happening here. Let me just erase some of this. So now, um, these are both the same thing, both expressions. Uh, I'm going to multiply them out to show that, they, if, that they're correct. In other words, if I multiply I'm going to sh either of these out, I'm going to show that it comes back to this original term. Let's try this bottom one first. So, x times x, right here. That's x squared. x times minus 3 gives us negative 3x. And then we move on. Negative 2 times x gives us negative 2x. And then negative 2 times negative 3 gives us positive 6. So if we add up negative 3x and negative 2x, we get negative 5x. Positive 6 is still there, and we still have our x squared. So that gave us our original term. What about this one right here? How do we work this out? Well, x times x, again, is x squared. x times negative 3. Again, think of this as a negative 3. 
is minus 3x. I'm just showing how to work this one through. Negative 2, don't forget that negative sign, times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And look at this, we have the same term as here. So, oops, so when we simplify this, right, when we simplify this right here, we will get our bottom term. So, um, that's just a quick example of how to deal with some simple factoring of quadratics. Hope that helps.